second rejoin. So uh, we're now joined by Cedric Golden, a columnist for the Austin American Statesman. We'll get to what we wanted you on for, but Cedric, your thoughts, if you don't mind, on on Mike Leach passing away. Man, <clears throat> not another one like him. And with somebody uh, who, who puts food on the table with good copy, and when we talk about good copy, it's not about what we're writing. It's about who we're interviewing. And Mike Leach was one of a kind. Man, I, I remember one, one year, I think it was 08, I was, um, I, I was dispatched with doing a Mike Leach column, uh, a Texas Tech column, what have you. And I called a couple of times, and it just rang, rang, and rang. He never had voicemail set up on his phone. And when he did, it was full. And so I wasn't able to leave him a message. So I told my boss, I go, I'll try to write something else the next day and I uh, got home uh, eight and then I um, woke up and my wife's like, who's calling you at one thirty in the morning? And I'm sitting there <laughs> going, Oh my God, I'm about to get divorced. And, um, and it was uh, Mike Leach. And he goes, Hey, this is Mike Leach. Does somebody need to talk to me. <laughs> it's like one thirty, <laughs> And I go, Hey coach, it's uh, Cedric Golden. How you doing? He goes, Hey, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm watching National Geographic right now, and I'm going to watch the game film in a minute, and I'm sitting there going, it's one thirty, And we talked for 20 minutes, and, uh, you know, he's gold. And, you know, he's no more for being an innovative uh, offensive genius, but I will remember uh, just, just the conversations. He was on my podcast once or twice, and um, – always talked about how Texas Tech owed him money, and I guess they still do. And and so you talk about the uh, offensive wizardry of his teams, uh, but my thing is, guys, I don't, you know, we can talk all day long about X's and O's and, and uh, wins and losses, but when, when someone like him passes away, you, you remember how a person made you feel. And any time I talked to Mike Leach, was always uh, there was always a smile on my face because – he made people happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I think it, uh, Cedric, it's not only a sad day for football, it's a sad day for comedy. I mean, I, I, I kind of feel the same way I did after hearing Norm McDonald or Bob Saget passed away because the guy was genuinely funny. Like, in a, in a way of, had that been his discipline, he probably could have been great at that too. Yeah, you see a guy like Anthony Jezelnik, and he's very dry humor and smart, and I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Uh, Leach is was very like that, very much like that. Uh, for the older guys like me and Smokey, uh, Stephen Wright, yeah, very very dry and funny without even trying hard to be. Uh, yeah, he would have been great at that. If you saw him, if you go to YouTube and do uh, Mike Leach on weddings, oh, oh my yeah. god, that is a last riot. I laughed so hard, and I hadn't seen that in years. And there's so many stories, and we've all been around them. And uh, quirky, strange, weird, great, all in one. Um, you know, you can you can never make another one of him. And and you know, we're gonna miss him because of the coaching. And he always sneaked up on somebody, no matter who he was coaching, and he'd spring that upset. But it's the conversation that I'll miss most. Cedric. Uh... I don't know how to transition away from the good memories of Mike Leach into a a much worse topic, but I mean, that's part of why we're having you on is to talk about what's going on in Austin right now. And uh, of late uh, that, or most recently, that was the news yesterday surrounding head basketball coach, Chris Beard, his subsequent suspension. And uh, it seems like it's kind of quieted down today. um, But your thoughts on, on kind of what went down yesterday and just sort of what's come out since then and and how that's being handled uh, down in the ATX. Guys, you just never know what you're going to wake up to. Mm-hmm. And I woke up to 174 text messages. And I'm sitting there going, oh. first thing I go is, man, Coach Leach must have passed. Because, you know, we, we, we were on the on the Leach watch for the last couple of days. And I see this and I go, what in God's green earth is going on with Beard? And just, just a total shot, a huge just a huge blow to the program, a huge PR mess for the university, and 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 maybe the end of Chris Beard's Texas tenure as we know it. 
thirty million dollars on the table, and and you're and you're in an altercation, uh, man. I, I, you know, we, we none of us were in that room. The only people that know what really went down are those two people and God. And I can I can pretty much assure you, it whatever went down was not worth it. There are no winners in this story. Um, the 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 players are are are, are trying to hold it together, but. This is the guy that brought him here, most of them. And there are a lot of new faces on this team. And um, a team that a team that's arguably the best college basketball team in the country is now having to deal with their coach uh, arrested in handcuffs on video in a prison uniform, just humiliating, um, uh, made, made probably the worst decision of his 49 years on the planet, and now now the university, the players, the team, the fan base, Long Run Nation, has to deal with the fallout, whatever that might be. It's quiet today, but we know it won't be quiet for long. Cedric, I, I know that there is always, as you mentioned, there's two sides to the story, but based on the arrest report, based on the information that was included, can you mm-hmm. see a scenario where he doesn't? Uh, that he does coach again at Texas? I don't, Smokey. Man, I don't. I just do not. It's ugly. On the surface, it's damning. Uh, The details are bad. Uh, Just a bad look. The optics are horrible. And it would have, it would take a a really monumental uh, effort, not only in the legal system, I mean, those charges would have to be dropped, or uh, he'd have to. I mean, if he pleads down, then he's saying he did it, and then that's a non-starter. He's got to go. But I think the charges will have to be dropped. I really wonder what his lawyer has cooked up because these guys, I watch a lot of Law and Order, and these guys are these are really smart guys. Is there a plan to to try to try to change the narrative to make it look look, look like? Maybe it didn't happen like the like the police report said. I don't know, but if you're asking me today if Chris Beard's going to ever coach at Texas again, I would have to say no. Cedric, it would seem to me to be a slippery slope for Texas to try to explain away details, even if the charges are dropped, because in abuse cases, a lot of times the charges are dropped. It's not uncommon mm-hmm. to see that and to try to explain it away or explain away details, especially for Chris Del Conte, this could be a career defining decision. It really could. And you know, if he was, if, if his name was Greg Hardy and he played for the Cowboys, he wouldn't really have any problems. He'd still be working, mm-hmm. but uh, this is different. This is different. This is, this is a college basketball coach at the flagship university in the state of Texas. And one of, one of the big, Big uh, universities in the country. Chris Del Conte has has made his bones by making some really, really good coaching hires in his short time here. And Vic Schaefer on the women's side has been the Final Four. He's a great hire. Mike White, the softball coach, gets him back to the Omaha and to the College World Series Championship Series. He's a great hire. And then, and then when you bring in Beard, who had that magical 2019 Final Four run uh, with Texas Tech, that was viewed as a coup, uh, an absolute coup. And so, um, I'm I'm like, man, I just don't I just don't know that um, he has a whole lot of wiggle room as the athletic director in in um, having uh, bringing back a guy who has been accused of something so egregious. And you know how our society is now about domestic violence. It's been long overlooked. Uh, women, w- women, uh, women's groups will have something to say uh, if he, you know, if he does come back. And guys, and I know this is very low on the totem pole, imagine what the road trips are going to be like if Chris Beard is back coaching Imagine his return to Lubbock. Mm-hmm. There all there are already uh, memes all over Twitter of pictures of Chris Beard in prison uniform and and just just some, some demeaning 
it's a really bad place, Twitter. We know that. And and uh, basketball fans, uh, particularly fans in Texas Tech, who still believe they were wrong by Beard leaving, are are, are going to be out for blood when the Horns return with or without Chris Beard. What kind of a scene was that uh, last night with Rodney Terry taking over and, and having to go to overtime to beat Rice? Obviously, you know, a tough task, you know, just a weird day overall. But what kind of scene was that? I didn't get to go to the game. I watched on TV because, man, I was just, man, that was an all-day sucker. And I was like, I'll just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not headed over to the movie, man. Not, not, man. They've got, they're going to have some more basketball games. But good for Rodney Terry that he was, uh, that he was able to marshal uh, his resources are all, are along with uh, Chris Ogden and company, and um, I think I think that they are um, gonna be okay with or without um, Chris Beard because uh, Rodney Terry knows these Austin streets. Uh, he coached at Bowie High School. He attended St. Edwards. He coached for Rick Barnes, and then he went off and became a head coach at UTEP and Florida at Florida. At UTEP and Fresno State, so he's got a he's got a nice pedigree. He's well respected. He's a hell of a recruiter. Uh, he was in on Duran and, and and guys like that, uh, DJ Augustine, people like that. He's he's one of those guys that might be one of the most underappreciated people over there. So I really think that he's gonna be fine, and um, I think the Longhorns are gonna still win some games. Uh, you know, Chris Beard is Chris Beard, and there's only one Chris Beard. But uh, Chris Beard has much bigger problems right now than winning basketball games. He's trying to save his career. Depending on what UT decides to do, is there any doubt that if, in fact, Beard does not come back, that Rodney Terry would become the interim head coach for the rest of the year? That's a really good question, and I don't know the answer to that. But I think I think that that would be the smart move to make. Why upset the apple cart when you know that the guy that you want is probably coaching somewhere right now? So he's not going to be able to leave a team that's presumably going to be in the NCAA tournament and then come to coach you. Uh, give him, give, you know, give Rodney this the reins for the rest of the season. Sit down with Rodney. Allow Rodney, allow Rodney to um, to apply for this job, and and then um, and then and then give a um, you know give a nice. I interview to him and then bring in whatever candidate you want. But uh, understand that uh, the guy you want, if it's not Rodney, is probably somewhere coaching. Cedric, I know you, you can't answer this exactly, but I, I'm sure everyone's curious. Like, any idea of what this process kind of looks like? I mean, I know they're at the the mercy in some ways of, of the law, but, you know, obviously not something they'd probably want to see drag out either and yet give – a fair shake to to hear this out, but like any idea on on how long this could be this uh, limbo uh, with with Chris Beard? No idea, but I think the sooner the better. But I think a lot of it's going to have to do with the legal process playing itself out. Right, uh, being accused of a crime and committing a crime could be two different things. I'm not here to to uh, convict Chris Beard, but I am here to say innocent until proven guilty. Like we've said, though, guys, the, the, the evidence that we've seen is damning on the surface. And I think they need to see uh, what what happens. Does he get, you know, does a grand jury return an indictment? And then is he going to face trial? Or is he going to plead down? Uh, will, will the charges be dropped? So there are a lot of questions that need to be answered before they can uh, make a decision. But I do know that when a guy is suspended without pay, man, that is that's a, that's a real message. Because how many times have we seen uh, a public official, a cop, or a teacher run a file of the law, get accused of something, and then get suspended with pay? Mm-hmm. This time he's gotten suspended without pay, and I think that's a real message being sent to Chris Beard by the administration. Uh, Cedric, uh, in the uh, the media of Austin. You're a part of it. There's a reason I asked you. There's a handful of you that that are just elite at what you do. But when some other places have been under fire, uh, it's been outspoken, right? What is the media right now about Chris Beard? What are some of the things that's being said? I think everybody's shocked that it happened, and I think and I think it's a 
I think I think it's a uh, it's got moving parts. It's fluid, um, but it's it's really really shocking that this kind of thing will happen. It happened two days after I, I covered them at a game. I talked to Jimmy Blacklock. Smokey, you know that. Oh yeah, he played at, he played at TJC. Yeah, where we went to school and and had a I had a wonderful conversation with him and talked to Chris Beard about Jimmy Blacklock and then. And then just a few hours later, here, there, there he is, um, at, at the center of a of, of a firestorm that he that he surely wants no part of. So, uh, as far as the media is concerned, guys, we are we we are shocked. Um, but nothing that happens uh, is a is a you know complete shock. I mean, because uh, in America and only you know in the world, only thing that's um, that you can hang your hat on is that things change. And uh, if you had told me that Chris Beard was going to be behind bars for for twelve or thirteen hours, you had told me that before the season, I would have laughed you out. Of, uh, I mean, I would have laughed. I was like, that's not going to happen. He's never gotten out of. He's never gotten into trouble. But if you're asking me about about uh, being fired or not being fired, I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. They basically fired Tom Herman for being a jerk. And Chris Beard is a winner, but Tom, and Tom, but Tom Herman never broke the law like that. And if you can fire Tom Herman for, for you know, falling out of favor with his locker room, then you're well within your right to fire Chris Beard for putting the, the uh, University of Texas in such a horribly negative light. Cedric, great stuff. We appreciate it. Thank you for being a part of the show. And I know that yesterday you probably went home and just collapsed. <laughs> We've all yes, been I there. Did. We've been there. Yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> I did, man. And I'm going. I'm going to Thursday to volley. I'm going to volleyball. Nebraska tomorrow yeah. in Omaha, and uh, hopefully uh, no one gets arrested in Omaha, and I can cover a sporting event. And come back and uh, maybe do some Christmas shopping. Don't forget my presents, Mo. I won't. <laughs> it's on the way. Thanks for your time. Hey, Seth, okay, great, to know you. great to see you. Known him for a long, long time. He started out in Tyler and has been working for the Austin American Statesman for uh, forever. Appreciate his time and a lot of perspective.